Hello and welcome to part 40, one of my videos today is Blender 2.7. In this video, in the next three videos, we're going to be creating a custom rig setup in order to allow us to pose the character's face and animate him talking. Before we jump in, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have and what we'll be creating in the next three videos. Of course, in the last video in this series, in part 40, we created a custom eye setup in order to let us pose the character's eyes to make him look like he's looking around in different directions. In the next three videos, we're going to be adding different features to his face and control setups, including shape keys and drivers in order to let us animate his face, not necessarily by moving vertices that are controlled by bones, but by allowing bones to control with drivers different shape keys, different versions of different parts of the character mesh in order to let us pose the face exactly the way that we want. Of course, when I move this eye controller bone, which I've given a custom bone shape too, it will make him look around. What you might have noticed is that I've also added eyebrows, and the eyebrows also sort of move appropriately when you move the eyes side to side. So that adds a little bit more depth um, without any extra animation involved. I've also gone ahead and added some bones directly for the eyebrows, so if I move these bones up, notice how I can only move them up or down. Um, it looks, makes them look more surprised and a little bit more, let's say, miffed or concerned. And as you can see, when I drag the eyebrow bones up, the eyebrows don't just move up as a static object, they actually warp and become a little bit curved. This is because we're using shape keys and not just controlling vertices of the mesh using bones. If we move the eyebrows down, of course, it looks a bit more concerned and they overlap with the eyes themselves a little bit. I also have a controller bone for the middle of the eyebrows, which if you move that bone down, it makes them look more angry and the eyebrows curve. And if you move it up, of course, the eyebrows curve in the opposite direction and it looks a little bit sad or upset. Let's go ahead and take a look at the mouth setup. Now, of course, I have a inner structure for the mouth, including teeth and a tongue. But let's go ahead and take a look at these bones first. If I grab this lower jaw bone and drag it down, you can see the mouth opens and I can only move it uh, a certain distance and I can move it side to side as well. And again, these are all controlled with shape keys. If I drag the lips forward, I can make him pucker or make an ooh uh, a shape for his mouth. If I drag it back, you can see the lips go inward a little bit for an mm or an m shape. If I drag any of these side mouth bones uh, up or down, you can see that I can make him either smile or frown, so I can do one or the other or both. Alright, so in the last video we created a custom eye rig, and since that video I've gone ahead and added custom bone shapes to all of the eye bones and the eye controller bones, so if I grab this rather binocular looking shaped bone and move it around, the eyes point in different directions. That's all good and great. In this video though, we're going to go ahead and model the rest of the face, including eyebrows, eyelids, uh, a mouth and the inside of the mouth, including teeth and a tongue. And we're going to go ahead and add some bones as well. In the following two videos, we're going to set up the rig in order for the bones to control different shape keys, controlling the position of different parts of the face. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select the mesh. We're not going to bother getting rid of the armature modifier on the mesh. We'll just leave it as is. We will have to go ahead and add um, more shapes to the mesh and what bones can, are controlled by it, uh, but we'll do that as we go. So with the mesh selected, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the bone layer. So we're just going to show the, the layer with the mesh. I'll go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. And as you can see in the last video, we added eyes and pupils. Unfortunately, we didn't move them far enough back, so right now they're almost flush with the front of the face. And as you can see, if I go to my side view, the pupils actually stick out a little bit. In order for us to create uh, eyelids that cover up the eyes, I have to move everything in here back. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, A to deselect all, and then in face select mode, I'll press L to select everything in the eyes and L again, and then I'll press Control plus uh, a bunch of times, maybe I'll go into wireframe mode. So you can see that everything is now selected on the pupil. I'll go ahead now and select, um, if I hold down Shift and Control and Alt, if I right click on one of these edges uh, or on this ring, I can select that whole edge ring and this one as well, still holding the Control, Alt and Shift, and then I'll press Control plus on my numpad to get the entire eyes with everything in there selected, and you can use the C key uh, to circle select as well if, if that was a little bit too complicated. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my gizmo and move everything there a little bit back, and that should be okay to do. I might also just take the pupils, so maybe I'll press A and L and L and then Control plus a few times, and I think I can afford to move those back a little bit just so that we have 
um, space to put in the eyelids. To make the eyelids, we're going to make a cube and basically just give it some um, loop cuts to make it a little bit more detailed. So let's go ahead and I'm going to actually select these two faces, uh, preferably the ones on the front of the face. And I'm going to press Shift S to bring up my snap menu and I'll select cursor to select it. That'll put my three cursor right there. So now if I press Shift A and add a cube, it'll add a cube right where that 3D cursor is. I'm going to go ahead and press uh, S to scale that way down to just a little bit wider than the eye. And I'll go to my side view and press S and Y to move it to make that uh, much, much thinner. Now it doesn't really matter how deep in to the head that we go, um, but we do want to make sure that we're covering up that eyeball. So if it moves straight down, then it should be covering up the, the, the pupil rather. Um, so I'm going to make that a little bit thicker actually. S Y and then move that a little bit back. We don't want to stick out the front of the head, so right about there. And I think that's doing pretty good. I don't really need any sticking up here still, so I'll move that uh, down a little bit. And what I'll do now is press Control R. I'm going to make some loop cuts. Actually, what I'll do first is Control plus that whole section and move it straight up so that it's no longer covering up the eye because we want to make it by default not at all having his eyes closed at all. So Right now, I'll press Control R and put my, my uh, mouse over that edge and then scroll up a few times to make it a little bit more detailed. So I'll click and right click, same thing across, Control R and then scroll up a few times, click and right click to put that in the middle. So I've got one eyelid and it's actually not going to be controlled directly by a uh, board. We're going to make a, a shape key that will animate using a driver uh, that is controlled by a bone. Before we can do that though, of course, we're going to model everything in the mesh, and that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to emphasize this, if you're going to use shape keys, which most people do to make a facial rig, we have to model everything on the head before we can start doing anything with bones or with adding more shape keys to make the different expressions for our character. Let's go ahead and duplicate the eyelid, so I'll press L on my keyboard to select that entire thing and I'll press Shift D and X to move it straight over. We have both eyelids. Let's go ahead and do almost the exact same thing to make eyebrows. So I'll go to my side view and I believe I'll just press Shift A again and add another cube and I'll scale it way down to right about there and I'll scale on the X axis, S and then X and make the eyebrow look like about that. And maybe I'll make it a little bit taller, S and Z and then S and Y to make it a little bit thinner and they will go into the head, so that's okay that they're actually uh, going deep. I'm actually going to move them a little bit farther forward uh, so that we can reach the back of it when it comes time to um, mark seams and put a texture on there. All right, let's go ahead and make a few cuts because we're going to make the eyebrows sort of warp. So I'm going to do a control R and then uh, let's see if I can get it. There we go. And then I'll scroll up a few times, click and right click. There we go. So I'll select the entire eyebrow, uh, L, and then I'll duplicate that, Shift D, X, and move it over to right about there. I think I'll move them a little bit down, so I'll select both, and I'll go ahead and move them down, so I'll drag them straight down to right about there, and that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and model the mouth. So what we have to do here is create a few more loop cuts, and yes, if I go back into my material view, and I do loop cuts and I slide them, it will distort the texture, so we'll have to unwrap again at a later point. I'm not entirely happy with this even updated um, texture right now because it's, there's many two different colors on the bottom of the face. It should be much more uh, solid and consistent and not so uh, varying in shade and, and, and color. So let's go ahead and press Control R and I'm going to make a cut above the mouth, so right about there. And build another one, Control R, and sort of down here. Now I'm giving the mouth lots of room, but I'm going to do one right in the middle now. So click and right click, because we want to do a few concentric circles, or in this case squares, because it's a rectangular head. So I'll press C, and I want to select all of these faces, kind of giving the mouth a very wide berth, or something a large area around the mouth. And I'm going to inset a few times. So I'll press I, and I'm going to go in a little bit, uh, to put there, and I another time right about there, kind of evenly spacing it approximately, and I, and right about there. Now I don't want to go too far inwards because, as you can see, 
uh, control Z. If I went in too far, it would start doing funny things around here. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit to read about there, and then I'll press S and Z on my keyboard to make that uh, much more narrow than it was before. So we, now we have the mouth. Um, what I might do is slide a few things around. I think these two edges are too close together. So um, I'm gonna scale actually uh, all four of those edges, uh, S and then X on my keyboard, just to move them outwards a little bit. Same thing with these ones, S and then X on my keyboard. And that looks pretty good to me. Of course, if you're doing an organic character, you would want to round this out, kind of going into the cheek area. Uh, but this is a Minecraft character. Let's go ahead and select the faces inside the mouth, and we're going to extrude inwards and then make a mouth cavity. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add uh, teeth and a tongue. So with these faces selected, we're going to press E to extrude inwards. So I'm just going to go a little bit inwards. And then again, I'm going to extrude uh, e, but I'm going to actually undo that. I'm going to E and then right click and then scale to make that bigger. So what I did is starting again, if I press E and extrude inwards and then press E and then right click and then S to scale, it's going to make a larger cavity inside. Now I can't see it, so I'll press Z on my keyboard and obviously that's way too wide. I don't want to make the cavity inside the mouth too, too big because then it'll interfere with the uh, shape keys that we make in the following two videos. Let's go ahead and scale that up now because the mouth has a, it goes up and down quite a bit. And then I'll press E again and extrude backwards. So now, as you can see, we sort of have an inside box uh, that's inside of his head, and the only opening is his mouth, which has some geometry around it, which means that we can deform it in sort of appropriate ways. Now, as you can see, if I go into edit mode, it's sort of hard for me to work with the mouth. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is press Control plus uh, twice, just select the inside part of the mouth, and then I'm going to uh, press Shift or Control i rather. Control i inverts the selection, so again I have everything in the mouth selected. I'll press Control i and then after press H, it'll actually hide everything else. So now I can just work on the inside of the mouth, and that's a good thing. Um, let's go ahead and select each face, because I've got too many faces here. Uh, it just makes it too complicated. So I'm going to select, and I'm going to go back into solid mode actually. Uh, I'm going to select by using my C key, my, my circle select, which is the C key on your keyboard, each side. Actually, I know a better way. I'm going to press uh, Control plus a bunch of times. There we go. And I'm just going to use a limited dissolve. So if I press uh, X on my keyboard, like I was going to go ahead and delete this, instead of selecting delete anything, I'm just going to use limited dissolve. And what that will do is it'll merge different faces together, basically making one uh, face for each side. And this side has a hole in it, so it has to do one little extra thing, because you can't have a face with a hole in it. So I've got the cavity of the mouth. Let's go ahead and add some teeth and a tongue. So I'm actually going to press Shift S and cursor to selected. I'm going to add a cube, and of course that's way too big. So I'm going to scale that down. We want the uh, teeth to be a little bit wider than the opening of the mouth. So I'm going to pay attention to where that mouth uh, is before I make any more decisions. So let's say if the teeth are that wide, it looks pretty good to me. It's not centered properly, so I'll move it over and S and Z to scale it way down. Once we make the bottom teeth, we can copy them for the, for the uh, top teeth, S and Z, and then S and Y, and I'll move it up to the front, not quite touching basically where the gums are, just a little bit back. Let's do a loop cut, Control R, and I'm gonna slide up because we need to make a bunch of teeth, or at least uh, sections on the ends to extrude backwards. So now into face select mode, I'll select these two uh, faces and again E to extrude backwards and that looks pretty good to me just because I'll go ahead and add uh, some loop cuts right there, Control R, click, right click, Control R and then scroll up, click, right click. So I've got my bottom teeth, and maybe I'll, I'll press L to select that entire thing and move it down a little bit. I'm going to duplicate it for the top teeth. Um, so I'll move that up a little bit, actually. Shift D, 
and then Z on my keyboard to move it straight up. And maybe right about there. It's hard to tell on a Minecraft character where, um, how far up uh, or down um, the teeth should be. That looks okay to me. Let's go ahead and press Shift S and cursor to selected. I'll press Shift A and add another cube. This cube's gonna be for the tongue. So I'm gonna scale that down to be about the right width, just a little bit uh, smaller than the um, inside of the teeth. And that looks pretty good to me. I'll do some loop cuts because this, again, is gonna be controlled by shape keys, which means we're gonna make different versions of the tongue uh, based on this one that we create now. And it needs to be able to bend and go to either side and stick out. So it needs some more geometry. Control R and then scroll up, click, right click, and then Control R. And I'll do a few more, a little bit more scrolling and click and right click. It's way too tall. <laughs> so I'll press uh, L to select the entire thing and S and Z. And I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker than the teeth. And right about there looks pretty good. Again, it's a Minecraft character, so everything is blocky. Um, this is a very, very quick face that we're making. Let's go ahead and show everything else again. So I'll press Alt-H. Alt-H will do the opposite of hide. It'll show everything. And then I'll go back into material view so I can see what's going on here. We have created all the geometry that we're going to. We've created eyebrows that are sticking out still, and that's okay. We've created the inside of the mouth. We've created um, eyelids that are inside the head, and that's okay. Uh, we'll end up moving these eyebrows back against the head once we do some marking of seams, and that's what we have to do right now. So let's go ahead and go into edge select mode. I'm gonna select um, the two eyebrows, L and L, and we're gonna do some uh, very quick unwrapping here. So to do unwrapping, we need a second window. We need the UV image editor window. So I'll make that a little bit uh, narrower, make a new window, of course, by dragging this little cross-hatched area over, if you're not sure how to use Windows. Um, you should go back and check out the user interface video in this tutorial series. All right, I'll open up a UV image editor window uh, using this window type button. And there we have the image. Now, if you don't have an image up there, uh, you can just go to this little icon here where you should have already loaded in an image, or if you're using my file, you'll find it here as well. It's called UV layout March 1st. That's when I made it. And we're gonna do some unwrapping. So right now, if I select everything in the mesh, you'll see that my map is here. Uh, but we want to start unwrapping the things that we've just added. So I'll select both eyebrows with L and L, and we're going to do an unwrap right away. U, and instead of just saying unwrap, we're going to say smart UV project, and that will automatically make seams for us uh, because I'm feeling lazy right now. And so when you do that, you have to click OK again. It'll split uh, any edges that are more than 66 degrees apart. All of our angles and these cubes or rectangular cubes are uh, 90 degrees, so I'll press OK. And there it's unwrapped that, but now I'll press A over here and scale this way down because uh, that was way too big, obviously, compared to everything else in this map. So I'm going to scale it down, and I'm just going to reuse the hair texture. So I'll grab with the G key, and as you can see now, if I go back into object mode, my eyebrows are shaded exactly the same as the hair, which is okay by me. Ideally, I would make another section over here and paint them exactly the way I want, but this is only for demo purposes in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and do some more um, unwrapping. I have to actually mark seams for the mouth, at least um, for the inside of the mouth. So I'll hold Alt in edge select mode, Alt right click on that edge to select the entire edge loop, Control E, uh, mark seam. So now that whole edge loop that we selected should be a seam indicated by it being marked uh, in red. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna press Z to go into wireframe mode, select um, this back face if I can get to it. Right there, press Control plus a few times, and I'm gonna do a manual uh, unwrap, or a, <laughs> an automatic unwrap rather. U and Smart UV Project, and okay. Now, it did a pretty good job, I'm happy with that. Sometimes you might have to play around and manually tweak these. This section doesn't really matter, it's just gonna be a dark red color. So I'm gonna scale it down, that's the inside of the mouth. And I'm gonna put it to right about there. Let's go ahead and do the teeth as well. So I'll select um, a back tooth and I'll press Control plus until the entire thing becomes selected. U, Smart UV Project, and okay. I'll press A and A over here, S scale that down. 
and I'll move it over to right about here. I'm just using any extra space that I have. And let's do the tongue, same thing here. L to select the tongue, U, unwrap, but smart UV project, and okay, there it is. A over here, S to scale down. And again, these are just gonna be solid colors. Uh, let's put that over here. Now, ideally what I would do is I would go back into Photoshop and I would find my original Photoshop file and add more color blocks to the image and then re-export it to a PNG and bring that back in. But luckily for us, um, Blender has a built-in paint mode. Um, and so if you kind of scroll over and I'm orbiting in this bottom uh, header um, to see more, so I'm using my middle mouse wheel like a button and then dragging, uh, just like orbiting in the 3D viewport. Um, if I change my mode to um, paint from view, so this menu right here, I can now paint right onto the image. And because I'm still in edit mode over here, I can still see the overlay of everything over here. And now how do I paint with Blender? Well, the tool shelf in the UV image editor window, if I press T, it comes up. And as you can see, I can now choose a different brush. I can even use a fill brush or a clone brush. Uh, this is a very quick uh, introduction to uh, the painting that you can do in Blender directly. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the tongue uh, red, so I'll choose red. I can choose the radius of my brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint. I can zoom in with my scroll wheel, and I can uh, pan with shift and my middle mouse wheel. And so I'm gonna use a smaller radius, and that's the tongue, I believe. If you need to check, you can. You can just go back over here and see what everything is. I'll make the radius a little bit bigger this time. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, strength is 0.7, so I need to go a little higher. That's why it wasn't doing it properly. Okay, let's go ahead and do the teeth. Uh, so I'll just pan over. Um, those are the teeth because they're <laughs> these, these shapes. So I'll go ahead and click on the red and turn the RGB up to one to make it totally white. Again, RGB works by, if you have all the maximum value, that means one of red, green, and blue, that means you get white light. Um, if you turn them all down to zero, you get black. So let's go ahead and turn this down. Um, I'm just gonna paint kind of manually here. I'll just make a big area and then turn up my radius and fill it in. Looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and uh, pan over and this I believe is the inside of the mouth which is going to be a dark red so I'll go back to red and turn down the lightness and I'll just do some painting there that looks pretty good to me now it's important to know that this is not uh, a saved image yet if you look over here down to the image menu at the bottom of this window there's a little star and if you know from other programs that means that you have not saved so if I go to the image and if I go to save as image, for some reason save image is blanked out. Save as image is as good as we're gonna get. So I'll click on save as image. I'll save over the original one, save as image. And then I wanna make sure it's packed into this file still. So I'll go to file and external data and it's automatically gonna pack that into the file. So I think we're good to go. I'm not gonna close this window yet in case we have to go back and touch anything up. I'm just gonna drag that over and basically make it very small and out of the way. I'll go back into uh, material mode and let's see if everything worked out. I think it did. I can see some white teeth and a red tongue and some dark red in there, that looks great. I forgot to do the uh, eyelids. So let's go ahead and select those. I'll bring that window back over here and I'll select the, what I'll do is I'll hide the front face. So now I can select these ones, L and L and then U, smart UV project, okay. And then if I turn back into view mode, I can do a proper um, organization of these faces. We can't do that when we're in paint mode. Uh, a and A, just like everything over here. Uh, S to scale down. And I think I'm just gonna use the bottom of the head. That seems okay to me, of course. Usually I would put it over here and then go into Photoshop and paint, but we've already got the good skin color that we need, so. That looks pretty good to me. Of course, you might want to go back into Photoshop or GIMP or whatever program you're using and do a proper job. But again, this is for this video only. So uh, let's press Alt H 
to show the lily front of the face, and as you can see, we've got everything painted. The last thing we'll do in this video is we'll go ahead and add bones. So I'll go back into object mode, so I'll press tab, I'm going to minimize this UV image editor window, and we're going to add some bones to control everything in our mesh. Our bones are down on this lower layer, so let's go ahead and press shift and click on both of those to show both layers. And I'll select my armature and I'll press tab to go into edit mode of the armature. We want to add a bone for the eyebrows and want to add a bone for the middle of the eyebrows. So the eyebrows are actually going to have two controls as I demonstrated earlier. So I'll press shift uh, with this middle uh, eye target bone selected. I'll press shift S and I'll say cursor to selected. We don't want to add the bone way out here, but this bone is centered. So I'll just add it right there. Shift A to add a new bone, which is that one right there, and I'll drag it back into the uh, middle of the eyebrows. And the eyebrows are out front right now. We can go ahead and move those back because we have already unwrapped them. Um, I was planning on doing uh, manual uh, seams, but we didn't have to. I did it in an easier way. So let's go ahead and scale that down, S and Z. And this is going to be the uh, main eyebrow bone which is going to control both at the same time although it'll use shape keys and not just act like a normal bone. So now that I've got that bone uh, there I'll duplicate it, shift D and then I'll press Z on my keyboard to move it straight up and this bone will make it a little bit shorter S and Z on my keyboard and this one's going to control the angry versus sad uh, versions of the eyebrows. Let's start naming these bones. So I'll drag that window a little bit wider. In fact, I'll get rid of that UV image editor window. And then I'll drag this one to make it wider. Um, this upper bone is going to be um, face dash uh, angry dash sad. And this one's going to be face dash brows. OK, let's go ahead and add some bones for the eyelids, because we have to control those as well. So what I'll do is I'll just select um, one of the pupil bones right there and shift S cursor to selected and then I'll press shift A. Again, we're still in edit mode of the armature. So now I have a bone for that eyelid and I'm going to move it back just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I don't think I will because we want to be able to see it. I might actually move these things forward all slightly. So we have their middle sort of outside of the face where they should be. All right, let's go ahead and make this one shorter. So I'll make it sort of match how big the uh, uh, eyelid is. And this one is this left eyelid. So we're going to call this one face dash eyelid dot. And this is his left side. And I'll duplicate it, shift D and X and I'll add a dot .r instead of dot .l.001. Dot zero zero All right, let's go ahead and add some mouth bones. So I'll, uh, I'll select maybe this middle controller bone again. Shift S, cursor to selected because we want a centered bone. And then uh, Shift A, we've got a new bone already. There we go where we just added this one. I'm going to move it straight down and straight back. But the important thing is the reason why we put our 3D cursor at this bone is to just get that 3D cursor centered exactly on his face. So this is going to be his lip bone. So I'll move it straight back on the y-axis. Again, leaving a little bit forward from the face. And I'll drag that nub straight down. And that bone right there is going to go just above the middle of his mouth. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to call this one face-lips. I'll duplicate it, shift D, and press uh, Z on my keyboard to move that straight down. I'll make this one a little bit taller, uh, not by much though, and I'll name it face dash uh, jaw. We're going to make two more, so what I'll do is I'll press shift D and I'm going to move it just manually with the G key uh, or duplicate it so it crowded it for me automatically right up to the corner of the mouth because this is going to be his smile and frown bone. Uh, I'm going to make this one narrower though, so I'll press control alt and S to make it uh, smaller and I won't make it quite as tall and this is going to be face dash mouth dot L I'll duplicate it shift D and I'll press X to constrain it and I'll move it to right over there and mouth dot R alright so now we've got all of our bones 
We want to make sure that they're all parented to the head though, and we have to make sure that they're all not deforming the mesh. Yes, they're only controlling shape keys of the mesh, which we have not created yet. So we do not want these bones to deform any part of the mesh uh, like a normal bone would. So with each bone selected, I'll go to the bone tab and uncheck deform. There probably is a better way than doing this manually, but I'll just do it very quickly. Uh, because we don't want any vertices to be associated with any of these bones. Okay, last step here is to parent them all to the appropriate bone. Now most of them will be parented to the head. So I'll select all of these ones and I believe I'm going to select uh, that one as well as these ones. And I'll explain why I'm not doing this one in a sec. And I'll parent them to this head bone last, control P and of course keep offset. This jawbone is going to be parented instead of to the head bone, it'll be parented to the upper lip bone. And the reason why that is is because this upper lip bone is going to be the one that we use to control the pucker or the the M, the the curling your lips inward version of the lips. So when I pull this one outward to make him pucker, we want this bone to follow along with the upper lip bone. So I'm going to undo that movement and select that bone, hold shift, select this bone, and control P, and keep offset. So I think we have everything we need set up. In the next video, we're going to make the shape keys uh, for the eyes and the eyebrows and the eyelids so that when you move the controller bone for the eye targets, the eyebrows will move a little bit and will make the eyebrow bones work and the eyelid bones work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.